Uh, so I want to talk briefly about culture. It was culture. What the fuck is culture? Um, culture is kind of like a set of norms, right? In a particular place, the people who live in that place have access to particular like systems. So like if public education is a thing, then public education can be part of the culture. If, they're, if in your town, everyone goes to church, okay, so then religion and church is a part of your culture. If you live in like a city, like a, a you know, a, a major metropolitan city, then maybe coffee shops and public transportation and the, the muni or the subway are a part of your culture, right? Going to the park, Going fishing could be a part of your culture. Going to the bar, I don't know. Every, these are all things that have to do with culture. So I feel like sometimes when people are talking about race, what they're actually trying to talk about is culture, but the reality is they don't have the vocabulary to say, hey, I'm talking about culture. And one really frustrating thing is I think a lot of people, when they're talking about Black Americans specifically, they believe that Black Americans have no part in American culture and they forget that Black Americans are literally the substance of American culture. Everything from the vernacular to the like public mainstream events to the, the music, the food, like so much of it is tied into specifically like counterculture, like it stems off of counterculture. That's not the point though. So, so then what is like, let's talk about some things that are mi middle class American culture. Like, what does that mean? I feel like I'm fucking sitting here showing you guys like every single day. I am in a like high rise apartment with like hardwood floors, stainless steel appliances, kittens, a job, debit cards access to like abortion medication <laughs> it's all the shit that everywhere else is trying to like a ban well actually no, i don't currently have i'm in tennessee so it's it's actually illegal to get abortions here so let me be clear i'm not over here breaking laws i haven't had any illegal abortions in america so let's not say that um but there's also grocery stores like Publix. like i went to Publix today and I got, um, I'll show you guys. I got like a, so lemon pepper oven roasted chicken. I actually got two of them and I'm gonna cut it up and then put it in a whole bunch of meals so that I don't have to cook any meat. Instead, I'll just rewarm that meat for the next, I don't know, five days or something. Um, so if I don't feel like going out to eat, I'll just put that over some rice and have it as a meal. And that's very convenient because grocery stores are a thing. If I lived in a village, though, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would have to, like, catch a chicken, cut a chicken, fry a chicken, you know what I mean? Like, season it up myself, cut the guts out, all that shit. I don't have to do that because we have grocery stores. Or, like, Amazon Prime, right? Like, I just subscribe to Amazon Prime, then I get a bunch of shit delivered here. Or, like, in my building, there's, like, a gym, so if I want to go exercise, I'll just go down to the floor where the gym is, and I'll just be like, get my work out on, you know? Or like, if I wanna go just be around people who are listening to music, I'll go to a honky-tonk bar right downtown and I'll just listen to the music, I'll grab a beer and I'll be like, or like tonight, I was like, I actually don't feel like cooking, so I just went to dinner, I went to Bar Taco, it was great. All these are a part of like American culture. It's a very American thing. It's a, like it's kind of like a part of the developing world, developed world, right? Like people have been doing this in Europe for a while. Just going out to dinner is a very a regular part of life. Going to work in the day, going to dinner at night. So now, if you look at all the popular culture magazines, who the celebrities are every night, we're like, we're getting these feeds. Oh, who's going to dinner? Oh, Taylor Swift went to dinner with Kate Moss. You know, Sabrina Carpenter went to dinner with Barry. His dinner going to like men and women or people who are dating each other i saw michelle rodriguez and her girlfriend they were coming from dinner somewhere in la going to dinner with the person that you're dating is a fucking regular thing to do that is a part of culture culture 
doesn't really have to do with race specifically. Anyone from any race can do it. Um, it's just more about, are you participating in the culture? This is a part of maybe like adulting culture. People in middle school aren't doing that. People in middle school are maybe, I don't know, on Snapchat or something, like sharing. They're still trying to figure out how to communicate. Instagram, I don't fucking know what they're doing. I don't know, I'm not in middle school. When I was in middle school, things were different. I'm talking about though, the culture around like what, the part of the society in which I am. Do you wanna say hi? Hi. Um, yeah, so culture is a thing. And I think that um, some of the things that South Africans are missing when they're like yelling at me in the comments, they're trying to make it seem as though all black Americans share the same culture. That's not true. They share some culture, but not all. And they they don't even live in America, so they don't. it seems like they don't even know what that culture is. And then they're trying to introduce Tyla as being like, when they're saying she's like multi-generationally mixed race, what the fuck does that mean? Like, I understand that two parents are of mixed racial heritage and so they look different, but like what the, like no one, I mean, I'm not saying no one cares, clearly people care. I don't care. I want to know, what, like, I'm interested in knowing what that means culturally. Like, oh, okay. So, like, her Irish grandmother or something, do they have a song or dance that they do every year? Like, what, how culturally does this play into her life? Does it at all? Because, like, I haven't heard anyone at all say anything about whatever this fucking culture is that she's a part of. Every single thing that I've seen culturally is her, like, shaking her ass, being basically naked with afros, it's like, oh, so you're like, culturally you seem to be doing a bunch of black shit. Like, <laughs> like, so, like things that we have culturally identified with blackness is everything I've seen in her portray of whatever it means to be like South African colored. So that's also very hard. Maybe like the South African colored people should dissect or package up their own culture in some sort of box and then share it with us. I would love to know. What culturally is so special or great or different, even different, not good or bad, just different about their culture related to our culture? Here's a good example. Um, I have recently got into like country pop. So Kelsey Ballerini has a cool like album, which is called Rolling Up the Welcome Mat. She actually produced like a whole bunch or she released a whole bunch of visuals for that project. I feel like I was gonna make content about this in the past and then I just didn't for whatever reason. But uh, recently, um, Kelsey Ballerini came on stage with Noah Cahan, who performed in Tennessee recently. I think it was like two weeks ago, and he's great. So Noah Cahan is from um, New England, but Vermont specifically. Specifically, and uh, so his his album is called his newest album is called Stick Season, and it's kind of about that, and it's great. He's got a song called Northern Altitude, which is kind of about growing up in the cold, growing up in New England, like what that's like, like distinguishing factors that kind of make his personality a little bit different because he grew up in the cold versus maybe having access to a beach or something. And then he's got like stick season, which is really nice, where he kind of talks about these feelings of like isolation where everyone, all of his friends have like gone on to do something else. He's waiting for them to come back into town after, you know, maybe for the holidays or something and kind of the sort of deprivation that he feels as his friends leave. The song is so good. And I think the Kelsey Ballerini, like getting on stage and performing specifically stick season with Noah Cahan kind of shows this like cultural moment of like, even though Kelsey Ballerini is from Nashville and Noah Cahan is from Vermont, they are both having this like shared experience as she's singing the song, you can like see her just like kind of going in being like, yeah, I love Vermont, but it's the season of the sticks and I saw your mom, she forgot that I existed and it's half your fault cause I just like to play the victim, I'll drink alcohol till my friends come home for christmas and i dream each night of some version of you that i did not have and i did not lose now your tired tracks and one pair of shoes now you're spitting halves and i don't have to lose 
my other half was you. I don't know, I like stick season. So if we're talking about culture right now, I feel like that's the cultural album that I'm relating to. I think it's great. I, I just, I don't know, I feel it in some moments. He has a song called Homesick. I felt that one, that was great. A lot of people are relating right now to Luke Combs who has some song about being a dad or something and he's just relating to it and other people are like, yeah. Some people are, you know, uh, really, really getting into Billie Eilish. I think she performed her song called Grown, Grown Enough or Grown something. Um, or I, I talked about this, the down bad, right? Like maybe you're in your girl feelings and you're still on the tortured poet society and you're like, down bad, crying at the gym. Everything gonna teenage with Okay, if I can't have him. I might just stay down bad, down, down, down bad. Like it just, it, come on. If you've been there, you know. I know if you're a girl on here who's had a breakup, you have been down bad crying at the gym and T Swizzle captured it. We get it, we get it, we've been there. We have been there. And then we've come, we've come through on the other side and here we are, but we've got a jam because you might be down bad right now. You can play that song while you're on the treadmill. Like, so bad. So I don't know. I feel like um, one of the things that's been really sad about the pop girls for a while is they're so fucking boring. There's nothing culturally that's like interesting about them at all. It's like they don't have any personality. Like Billie Eilish came with like bad guy. She came with like Billy Bossa Nova. Oh, like, I think Billie Eilish has given us, like, this new kind of complex, character-driven, main character energy, female protagonist narrative that we can, like, run with. And now that we've gotten that, I feel like we're holding all of the other artists to the same level. We expect all the artists to be songwriting phenoms like Taylor Swift and Billie Eilish and the bar is too high. I'm not expecting Tyla to be able to write like Taylor. That's ridiculous. But I am expecting her to have fucking some personality at all. At least if I'm gonna listen, like, maybe that's the thing. Like, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these artists are just not for me. I like complex artists. I like female songwriters with a fucking story to tell. I like any songwriter with a real story to tell. I like a story. I'm a bitch with a story. Like for me, <clears throat> when I, you know, first started like coming of age and I was in college and I, the, the songs that we were listening to were like Young the Giant because I went to the University of California and they were from the University of California. Like I was at Davis, they were at Irvine. Like they were like before me, but like I, like we all knew them and we all like supported them because we're like, oh my God, it's like a UC group. And it was like the whole state was behind them. Like every single concert that they played were like, yeah, you know, everybody had like the t-shirts, like, Going to Bottle Rock and seeing Young the Giant was like the best thing to ever happen, ever. It was so fucking classic because you just knew it was like, these are our people. These are our people. This is us. What do they know about cough syrup? What do you know about cough syrup? Let's talk about culture for a minute. Do you know when I'm saying cough syrup, does this mean anything to you? Maybe it doesn't because culturally you weren't there. When I say my apartment, after leaving my apartment, I feel this cold inside me. It howls away all through the market. It calls your name. Oh, oh. Paralysis? Does this mean anything to you? Maybe not. And you know why? It's because the cultural moment that happened that made this significant, you might have missed it. You weren't there. You don't understand. All the context is gone. It's like when Nirvana came out with like that Teenage Spirit song or the Cranberries, right? They had that classic song that was in Clueless. If you weren't, if you didn't watch the movie and you didn't understand like 
the cultural context of the song at the time and the angst that came with listening to it, it doesn't mean anything to you. But if you were there, it means everything to you. It means everything. That's the difference. So maybe, I don't know, this moment might actually be this like cultural moment for other people. Not me, right? Because I'm not going through some existential identity crisis right now where I'm trying to like understand blackness or what it means to be around in America. I under, I've been here, I get it, right? Like it's, I'm not new here. Maybe that's not the case for a lot of people. Maybe they're explore, <coughs> exploring these like identity crisis conversations and questions for the first time ever. And they get to do that. I don't have to be a part of their thing. I guess I just, I just wanted to pop on and kind of say that because I feel like I'm at this really strange place where I am heavily developed into the adult person that I am. And I'm actually watching my kittens develop into like adult kittens, adult cats, I guess. And their personalities are forming and they have all these preferences with food and drinks and snacks and sleeping and waking up on a schedule and shit. And it's just like, wow, these fully formed cats with all their preferences, you know? And like, I'm the caretaker. When I come in, I know what Brew's gonna do. He's gonna do the play dead thing because he wants my Birkenstock to hit his stomach because that's what the fuck he likes, I don't know. It's all fascinating. I wanted to pop in and say that because I know there's some new people here and I like to keep the conversation going. I don't want to have you stuck on like yesterday's conversation when today is a new day. Today is a new